It's almost the end of July. Ooh. He thinks I gotta do some pickle, uh, not pickles, but uh, cucumber picking soon enough. But today is garlic day. Garlic is definitely ready to go. Birds have been getting at our pear tree, obviously. So let's start by, ah, people use forks and all that stuff. I just use my hands. Oh, maybe I will have to get a fork or something. Ah, just dig, Kim. Just dig. You can dig. Oh, sorry. That's an earthworm there. Ground is still wet. It's been fairly rainy lately. But... Look at that beauty, eh? Nice. Very nice. I'm going to try something a little different drying them this year, too. I did pull up one earlier to see how it would do because normally I will uproot them, you take the dirt off, whatever, and then I bundle them up. But I will show you what I have going on in my greenhouse soon enough. And I have one garlic in there that has been drying now for the past week or so, a couple weeks actually, I think it is. And it seems to be doing just fine. And it saves me from having to like leave the, um, our shed that is behind the uh, water tank. Because unfortunately we've been having a lot of chipmunks lately and we don't want them to find their way into that shed and decide that they can build a nest and, you know, live rent free. That's just not going to happen. I'm going to continue on with this and then when it comes time to get them ready to dry, I'll show you what I'm going to be setting up. Look at that guy. I haven't bought garlic in like quite a few years now because I learned how to grow my own. Definitely has been worth it though. Look at that. Anyway, I'm going to continue on with this and I will be back in a little bit. Well, I'm back from a little bit of a break. I got the heebie jeebies and I actually had to eat something. Um, I did pull off some cucumbers and one of them was quite large, like really too large, like this wide, like even wider than this pear. Not great for pickling, so I made a cucumber sandwich out of it. Why waste food, right? There was only one pear that fell off the tree when I was uprooting the garlic. I knocked the other one off. So I'm just going to let those ripen on the counter in the kitchen and see how they taste. Last year they were very sweet tasting, beautiful pears. But let's get back to the garlic. So this is what I've uprooted. It's really, 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 really nice. Like, look at the, the cloves are gorgeous, nice. Some are quite big, some are medium size, and that's all good. And of course, I did let one keep its scape, this one here. Uh, it's really, really long, believe me. You'll see it at the end of the video, just how tall it was. But I need to cut this guy off about here. I'm going to save them and I don't need right about here. That'll go in compost. Uh, yeah, you'll be fine. You can be fine. So let's go inside the greenhouse and show you what I got going here. 
this is how I decided to try and dry garlic this year. Let's take this part off. Oops, that keeps 36 degrees in here. It's balmy, beautiful, just like summer should be. Put you there right now. So this was my test garlic. It's not completely dried yet. I can still see that there's some green in that in there, but it has been in here for a couple weeks now. So it's coming out quite nicely. So I'm not too, too worried about the rest of the garlic being put in here for drying purposes. My big, problem will be, actually it probably won't be a problem really, just have to make sure I get all of the greens. It's not like you care how they look now, Kim, that the thing has been, oh, come on. I'm so uncoordinated, it's unbelievable. I'm not going to have to get that later. I should just remove those right now, shouldn't I? And one, two, three down in there. There. Just let them. Yeah. Let's just get rid of those while I do this, right? Smart idea. And that's how I'm going to let the garlic dry this year. You need a warm place, so it's friggin' warm in here, that's for sure. And the airflow is pretty good, actually. Lots of, there is a, quite a bit of a breeze coming through. And if necessary, which hasn't actually been really necessary this year. I have not even had the fans on once for the um, watermelons. There. Which, a really big disappointment. I had a, a really nice sized watermelon that was growing right in there. He was about, he was about this long and I didn't get to support him in time and he fell off. Juan was so mad, so mad. So uh, the only other substantially sized watermelon I have is here. And he's all secure now, so he won't fall. Well, I'm gonna go back to this, get it all done. I'll show you what it looks like once I'm finished. You know, this got easier towards the end, of course, right? You figure out your groove just as you get to the last ones. And of course, if I do this, if this works out well and I do this next year, I'm going to forget how I did it. I'll have to figure it all out again. Just because that's the way I operate sometimes. So here's the last one. So the two challenges <clears throat> going forward will be keeping the watermelons out of here because they are just growing wherever they want to pretty much. See, just when you think you've got your groove going, Kim. And to make sure that it doesn't get wet because the greenhouse does leak when there's a real, real, real heavy, heavy rain. So scientific this stuff and then this here just to give it a bit more height over top um, and I don't quite have this where I should right okay that means I'm gonna come in a bit come in a bit I think those come in a bit too we'll see now fine. This is just to keep extra sun off of it. <clears throat> there we 
we go. A little bit of light's not going to kill it, but everything's pretty indirect in here anyway. And when the breeze comes through, it's very breezy in here. Put my temperature gauge back up so I know. Yeah, I'll just put it here actually. I know how hot it is in the greenhouse. So there. So if this one's any indication, everything should be fine. I just keep checking on it, make sure everything is fine. And there's the garlic. That's 27 plants, which some of you think, oh, it's not a lot of garlic. It's not a lot of garlic, no. But I learned from, not last year, but the year before I did like, uh, I grew like 90 some garlic plants because I had two garden beds full of them. And it was too much garlic actually, because you know, we do use garlic, but we're not, you know, I don't do garlic three times a day, every day of the week. So this will be more than enough to get us through to the next garlic harvest and still have bulbs to use to plant in the fall actually. So it's all good. Anyway, we will see you at the next harvest or if something happens in between. Thanks for hanging out. Ciao, ciao. See this cut? On the bottom. These little bulby things, whatever. It's taller than me.